I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my diary of a painter. So this is the start of the week. It's actually Sunday, but Monday is going to be my day off this week. So I'm working today, working on this still life. So this still life right here, working title is from the Fountain of Youth. Here's the painting before I start working on it. If you saw my video last week, I was talking about how um, I got things like drawn in but it, it ended kind of frustratingly as things started getting like mushy and looking a little weird like I didn't make as much progress as I wanted to last week. And this painting, well the setup and how I'm painting it is gonna be, I want it to be like a more bright airy painting as you can see in the setup it's pretty bright everything is back lit and I'm not quite used to working that way where everything is like very light. Um, my other still lives have that dark moodiness to it that I like, but I wanted this one to go in a slightly different direction. So building up the layers and figuring out how I want to key, key this has been a little bit tricky, meaning like um, having my darkest darks and my lightest lights on my painting. So I know the range of values that I'm going to be working with basically. So in the setup, you can see that the, the shadows are pretty luminous in in spots but i want to make sure that i'm even though that they're luminous i want all the shadows to connect to each other and i'm gonna be figuring that out this painting session exactly how i want those shadows to work so this is my palette i started mixing up various um well three different shadow colors and all of these pretty much have all of my colors. Well, not a lizard and crimson. I always have that on my palette, but I rarely ever use it. But um, I have um, a mixture for the table cloth so that I can work that around the shadows of the napkin. That's what I'm going to be working today, the shadows of the napkin. And then these shadow colors, which has yellow ochre, Sinelli red, which is like a cad red but non-toxic, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. So those are the mixtures. I used to make up these and yeah so I'm starting off with that with the base but I'm sure I'm going to change it up a bit because I want to make sure that I get all that luminous light <laughs> it's not well it's a shadow so I, I guess I can't call it light but they are very luminous and warm so I'm going to be working that trying to make that a bit more specific with the shadow and then um, also working with making sure everything looks unified as well so like for example the tablecloth is so cold in comparison to the warm shadow in the napkin and I do want to show that difference but super subtly because I don't want your eyes to like be looking at the shadow shape I want it to be all about the martini glass and the light in the painting also not like a super fantastic place for me to put the my phone which i filmed this because i don't want it to get in my way and bump into it all and i know that the painting's a little bit <laughs> far away but this is this is what we've got so far i start correcting and connecting the shadow shape of the napkin and the tablecloth i start with the middle shadow color for the whole shadow shape then i take a half tone and make sure i get the right transition from the shadow shape into the light shape because sometimes the transition is sharper and sometimes it's really gradual. But today I wanted to work on getting the shadow shape to be unified, but also show the variation in it very subtly though, like with how luminous parts of the shadow are. So then I take more pure red and pure yellow color into parts of the shadow shape to get that colorful luminosity or I take my darker shadow mixture and get that in there where I need to darken the shadow more. I find to keep the shadow really unified, I start with one tone that goes for the whole shadow shape and then I brush in variations of that mixture to show the variations that the shadow has, but doing it this way I find still keeps it very subtle, which is what I want. I then move on to the glasses, which the glasses are part of the shadow shape. I had them in a bit too small, and so I wanted to make sure I got them bigger 
especially the, the lenses part of the glasses, the eyeglasses. But the glasses are just simply blocked in and I wanted to get them looking more solid and less sloppy like. I think the glasses are gonna be really challenging to get them to look beautiful and not too worked after because they're a man-made object that's like very geometrical and also small, thin parts of it. So I know I'm gonna be going back and forth from making them really tight and solid and then destroying them to get a really nice blend of style in there. Monday. Today I start in the background. Since yesterday, I worked on the shadow shapes of the napkin, tablecloths, tablecloth, and glasses. I wanted to finish that off by working on the last shadow shape, which is the background. The background is rose bushes up against a fence. I am just working on the wood tones and the green tones of the rose bush, branches, and fence. I plan to put the roses in, but I want to wait until I have the rest of the painting properly keyed so I make sure I don't make the roses too bright. And I also want to make sure that the roses are used in the background for a compositional element that'll bring movement and also support the movement that is happening in the, mid the midground and foreground. With working on the background, I start dark and then layer the lighter tones on top of that. I'm treating the background as a shadow shape, so if I have variety of value and variety of tone back there, I want to make sure that it's subtle and still really unified so I don't bring attention away from the martini glass, which is the subject of the painting. I know I want to show even more variety and more specificity in areas of the background and get more colors worked back there as well since right now it's just mostly browns and greens that i have in the painting back there but i'm just blocking everything in right now and so what i'm more after is just the proper value once i am satisfied with the background i paint the top part of the martini glass when I paint this, I feel like I'm really just letting go and not strictly mixing super specific colors for this. Um, I find glass to be very elusive, and so I just want to try a bunch of things right now. So I put in grays and then blues and reds, and I really see a lot of blues and reds that are being reflected in the glass, which I think look nice compared with the, the green that's in the background behind the glass. And then also, of course, the background is also being reflected in the glass as well. I take a break and come back to my painting and things are looking too stringy paintbrush wise, like I was using too small of a paintbrush for what the area needed. Also, there's a lot of separation in tones and the glass, it just has a more fluid look as the tones are reflected into it. So I take a bigger brush and swipe it down the left and the right side, which unifies all of those tiny brush strokes that I had to make it instead look like one brush stroke that's made up of a lot of tones, which is a really cool effect. And I do this all over the glass and correcting the tones and, a, and a, correcting the tones a bit, making them more lighter or darker where they need to be. Then I get out a very small brush that is very soft to add some small details like the rim of the glass and also the rim of the water that's in the bottom of the glass. Also, this week I started using my medium to paint with. Just a little bit though. I'm using linseed oil for my medium to help the paint flow just a little bit smoother. Before this week, I had my medium cup on my palette filled with the linseed oil, but I wasn't using the oil to paint with, but instead I would dip my brush in it and wipe it off on a paper towel to clean the brush if, if I wanted to use that same brush for a different tone. Wednesday, I start the day by correcting the top part of the glass. The bottom of the cup part of the martini glass needs to be raised a bit as the glass is just looking a little bit too <laughs> stubby. Then I start into the stem and also work down to the stand part of the martini glass. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing that I did yesterday where I let myself really go and I'm not making strict exact mixtures, but rather playing around with colors and values because um, I see so many different tones reflected in the glass. So I feel like this is like just a really good time to experiment with that. 
And then like yesterday, I do the same thing where I then take a bigger brush and unify a lot of the separate tones and brush strokes. I find, I find the stand of the glass to be really tricky. There are a lot of values, colors, and temperatures in a very little space. And also the transitions between all those mixtures, they have a lot of variety too, because in glass, you see sharp, fast transitions between tones and also slow, gradual transitions. And I want the glass to look as effortless as possible, like it was done with as few brush strokes as possible. I find that really beautiful. I do not want something that looks really labored over, like I had teeny tiny brushes and my face was like an inch away from the canvas while I painted it. So when I go back into the martini glass, like painting the whole martini glass again to resolve it when I'm like in the resolving stage of the painting, I want to have the necessary details that it needs, but also paint it as simply and beautifully as possible. For the time that I have left in this painting session, I start to work on the napkin. I work on the upper left corner that touches the eyeglasses because this area has shadows, dark half tones, and also lights. And I really want to explore how I'm going to be mixing the colors of this napkin. And since there's such a variety in value, I thought this would be a really good place to practice. And then tomorrow, I will focus on the whole napkin, and my goal is to get it really solidly locked in. Saturday, I get to work on that napkin. I'm not used to mixing these types of colors that are for the napkin, so I do as I did with the martini glass, where I play around a bit to see what the painting needs for the napkin area color mixture-wise. Then I break the napkin down into big planes as best as I can. Some areas are really easy to do this, like the front of the napkin. Others are more tricky to simplify because there is raking light. I find raking light to be really beautiful, but raking light makes it pretty tricky to break into simple planes because as the light rakes over an area, you will get lights and also dark half tones or shadows all right next to each other really close. So the back part of the napkin has raking light around it, kind of like where the martini glass sits on the napkin. Honestly, I'm not too thrilled with how this day turned out painting wise. The painting session was a bit shorter than I would have hoped and I had, I just had a lot of trouble focusing today as well. I was so tired today and I really didn't want to paint at all, but I'd been sick on Thursday and also Friday and so I didn't get any painting done those days and so I really wanted to get some painting work done today. However, it's still, it's still a good layer that I can then improve upon another day and so all in all, I'm glad I painted it. That's all for this week on my painting from the Fountain of Youth. I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, like and comment on this video because it really helps me out.